Welcome to the Core Women Podcast, the place for women entrepreneurs, authors, and self-starters looking to build community and gain valuable insights through expert interviews with women at the top of their game. Join your host, podcaster, producer, expert coach, entrepreneur, and author, Dr. Summer Watson, as she aims to inspire and empower you through these candid conversations. Lean in and embrace the journey. It's time to start the show. Here's your host, Dr. Summer Watson. Today on the show, I would like to welcome Chastity Duyon, who is a first-generation college graduate who holds two master's degrees, one in counseling psychology and another in communication studies and organizational leadership. She has over four years of experience as a dedicated career coach and more than two years of experience in recruiting. She is passionate about helping individuals find their professional path and connecting top talent with leading companies. During her tenure in technical recruiting, she successfully recruited software engineers for Google. She has also experienced healthcare recruitment. She's also worked in community-based mental health and higher education. She currently works full-time as a live data operations analyst and recruiter of basketball scouts. We have so much to talk about. Let's dive right in and welcome. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me on, Dr. Watson. So excited to talk to you today. Oh, it is my pleasure. But before we jump in to your professional background, I want to ask you a question. If you could describe your journey thus far in one word, what would that word be and why? That is a really great question. Um, As I was thinking about this, I would really say the word would be resilience. Um, I've had to overcome many things, you know, from a young age and and losing my father to to murder and, you know, progressing in life and being a first generation college student and not having people around me to kind of show me the path of what it was like to get into college um, and having experienced the layoff during the, the mass tech layoffs that happened in 2023. Um, I feel like in each step of my journey, there has been something that I've had to overcome and and be resilient. And that's really led me to where I am today. Well, thank you for that. Let me take you back a couple of steps here. Where do you think that resilience has come from? Resilience really, I would say, comes from my faith. Um, I'm very strong in my faith and it's something that has been an anchor for me since a very young age. I was raised in the church. My mother is very involved in my entire family. And so my faith has really been that anchor for me and that solid grounding that I can always turn to whenever things happen to me. Um, It's always the sure footing that I have and um, it's it's very foundational for me to have my faith in Christ and to be able to have that to lean and depend on during those tough times. Yeah. And I'd say there are definitely some of the things that you've mentioned are extremely tough. How did you overcome the death of your dad to murder? That was really very unexpected, a very challenging time. Um, At that time, I was 13 years old and my mother sent me to a therapist. It was the first time that anyone in my family had gone to therapy. At the time, you know, my mom was dealing with the grief herself of having lost someone who was a very close friend of hers. And then also my friends were the same age as I was. And so they didn't really know what to say or how to handle that situation either. So my mom sent me to a therapist and it was something that was super helpful. It it really gave me the passion to want to help other people in that way. And it is why I ended up pursuing psychology and counseling psychology degrees, thinking that I would become a mental health therapist, having been able to work in community-based mental health for a little bit. But it really gave me that passion for just wanting to reach back and help people who've been through such traumatic experiences in life. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for touching on such a sensitive subject and how you were resilient through it. I really appreciate that. So when you look back on your journey, what are some of the key experiences or lessons that brought you to this point in your life? And how have you cultivated your passions? Because there, obviously, as I read your introduction, there are so many, which is fabulous. (laughs) So how have you 
tapped into those passions, cultivated them. So tell us a bit more about those milestones. Definitely, you know, having amazing people around me. I've always been one who's loved mentorship, had mentors along the way who've helped me to find the career trajectory that I wanted to go on. Also, when I was in college and being a first-generation college student, we had a program that was a Donnelly Scholars program for first-generation college students specifically. And we had mentors um, who were faculty members. So even from that time, you know, I've had people constantly speaking into me and speaking over me and encouraging me to continue on. That was something that was really helpful to me. I was able to learn more about the path that I wanted to take with psychology. Um, I had that person who helped guide me through my academic program. That person's actually still a person that I'm in contact with today and is one of my absolute favorite professors. So I feel like when it came to cultivating my passions, community has been super important with that. I've always wanted to give back to the community that helped make me the woman that I am today. And a large part of that has been surrounding the youth. Um, so as I've been mentored by individuals who are older than myself, I've always wanted to reach back out to those who are younger than me and who are up and coming and who have shared some of the same experiences that I went through or who are just trying to navigate what they're wanting to do in life. Um, so I currently have a few young ladies that I mentor. And that has been really something that I've been passionate about since a young age. Even when I was in elementary school, my teachers knew my love for reading and I was able to help with special needs classes. And I went in there and, and did tutoring at a young age. So it really helped to cultivate my passion for helping others. And I've just tried to carry that with me throughout my life. Mm, oh my gosh, I love it. So one of the things that you said, one of the phrases that you use, as you talked about mentorship, you said the folks that were speaking into you. I love that phrase. Mm -hmm. because it's not as if they were speaking past you or beyond you. They were speaking into you. Can you tell us a bit more about what you meant by that? Because I think I know, but I want to hear it from you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I feel like just growing up, I've, I've had people who have seen things in me that I haven't seen in myself along the way. People wouldn't believe it, but I'm actually pretty shy. And so having those people who've, you know, believed in me to do big things. I've had people who've told me about ending up working in sports someday. And it, it's not really something that I always saw for myself or, or that I thought was achievable because it is such a male dominated industry. But just, you know, continuing on the path and knowing that I had that passion and then finding a way to get into this opportunity, thinking back on those words that people have told me along the way. That's why I really feel that they spoke those into me because they've believed in me in times that I didn't believe in myself. They've helped encourage me as I completed my programs and went through, you know, my bachelor's and both of my master's degrees. And in those times that I felt discouraged, I had people speaking into me and reminding me that I was well capable of doing the things that I was working on at the time. And I just really carry those people in my heart with me all the time. And, and there's some very important people in my life today who were those people who've really encouraged me along my journey. Mm, thank you so much. You also have, as you mentioned, two master's degrees. You are a first-generation college student. You obviously have a love for learning and growing in many different ways. Tell us more about your passion for recruitment, scouting, and helping people find their professional paths. Definitely. So just having had the experiences that I've had and being able to experience several different industries, um, really feel passionate about helping people find that industry and, and find that job that they're passionate about and letting people know that sometimes you do have to take that opportunity that gets your foot in the door before that door opens completely for you to get into that company. Um, it's actually something that I did myself. I took a contract scouting role with my current company and it was able to land me a role full time because they saw the experience that I had in knowledge in sports, but also the recruiting experience that I've had as well. So I'm now able to use that in what I'm doing to help bring on additional football and basketball scouts. So just by having the experiences that I've had, I really wanted to reach back and help others who are looking for that. And actually during 2008, I was able to work as 
a summer intern at our local employment office, and it was during the Gulf oil spill. And there's so many people in our area who were dependent on those opportunities in the seafood and the fishing industry, um, just living here near the Gulf Coast. It was a very big industry and it had a very big impact on so many people. And I was able to help people during that time with resumes and tapping them into their unemployment benefits. And just having seen so many people who didn't know how to write a resume, how to even start one, because they had been doing, you know, fishing for their entire life and hadn't really had to write a resume or try to get another type of job. That really helped spark my interest in helping people when it comes to their careers and starting at that level of the resume that so many people struggle with and is something that I found to be quite enjoyable, you know, to help people with that and be able to help them to best showcase themselves because it really is a resource that you can use to sell and market yourselves to companies. Absolutely. You have an incredible bucket of skills and talents and energy. So, I mean, you must know your sports. <laughs> I really do love sports. Football is definitely my number one passion. Um, I love basketball. I've also become a huge fan of softball as well. But it's been something that I've I've been passionate about since a young age. I currently kind of have a following from some of my friends and family members when it comes to football. And, and I like to post about it on my social media. And some people have told me like, hey, I didn't get to watch the game, but I knew exactly what was going on because I was able to keep track with your posts. And so it's something that I've just enjoyed doing. And with this opportunity in particular, I found it on Indeed and it was for a college football scout and it was in my local area. And I got to do it at a, a local university. And I did that from August up until January, just really, you know, network within the company with the, um, the bosses that we had at the time. And I let them know up front whenever I was first interviewing that, you know, this is something I'm passionate about and would love to do full time if you all ever have any opportunities. Also told them about my recruiting experience. And then lo and behold, in January, I was tapped via email and they let me know that they wanted me to apply for this opportunity and thought I would be great at helping out with also recruiting and was able to be brought on full time as of February 1st and have been uphill running <laughs> ever since I've gotten in the company and just working hard and became one of the first members of the company who became an all-star within their first month of working with the company. So it was a pretty huge honor and um, I'm absolutely loving everything I do. Oh, okay. I'm going to be cliche here. <laughs> this is an absolute touchdown. Like you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh. You've got so many hobbies. A love of football. You're, you're a dog mom. <laughs> you have an incredible knack for social media, content creation. You're an analyst. You've got 73,000 followers on LinkedIn. <laughs> how, how have you made time for balance between work and hobbies? Mental health is something that is extremely important to me. I believe in self-care and it is something that I try to implement weekly, even daily really is more so um, at the granular level. I love taking that downtime and just sometimes it for me, taking my dog for a walk. <laughs> like it's been really relaxing. I live very close to a park. She absolutely loves going for walks. And I use that time to either tune into a, a good podcast or listen to music, or sometimes I'm just tapping in and listening to my own thoughts and just centering myself and seeing where I'm at and, you know, doing that self-evaluation. And I do believe that self-care is really important. So it's something that I'm constantly reminding myself about and trying to incorporate in my schedule but I also like to tell other people about it as well. I try to use my platforms to advocate for mental health and breaking the stigma behind that. And I love to tell people about those coping skills of, you know, not having rest be something that is earned, but something that we habitually do because it is something that we need. It refreshes and replenishes us. It helps us to be able to better focus. And I feel like that has been something that has been super important and has helped me throughout my career and my personal life. Oh, brava to you. <laughs> wow. You are an inspiration. Thank you. And it, yeah, absolutely. So as we come to the close of the interview, we've covered so much ground here. My last question is, 
if you were to give the listeners one tip about how they can embrace their passions and live a balanced life, what would that tip be? I would say when it comes to embracing your passions, just keep that in front of you. I very much so believe in having vision boards. I have them in my office and around my house and in my phone as well. So it is something that I keep before me, just reminding myself of those passions and taking those small steps that will get you there. It doesn't all happen in a big chunk. It doesn't all happen overnight, but just reminding yourself to take those steps and make that progress towards what you want to do towards that thing that you're passionate about and incorporating that self-care is super important. I think having that as something that you implement as a part of your weekly schedule is something, you know, having that Sabbath day or having that day where you rest or relax, or you take in something that is good for your soul or for your heart that speaks to you. That is something that I would give the listeners to carry with them when it comes to embracing their passion and incorporating that into their balanced life. Mm, Wow. That is a balanced answer. Thank you so much, Chastity, for joining me on the Core Women podcast today. I've absolutely enjoyed the time. I'm so honored. Thank you for having me, Dr. Watson. It has been a pleasure. You can follow Chastity Duyon on LinkedIn and Instagram. Thank you for joining us on the Core Women Podcast with Dr. Summer Watson. We're so glad you're here and would love to connect more with you. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Core Women and on Twitter at Core Women One. For more about Core Women and Dr. Watson, visit corewomen.com. Want more support and resources for amazing women like you? Great! Join Dr. Watson and Jen Fontanilla at the Life, Love & Money Collective, a core women production that aids in understanding the key traits that might be getting in the way of living a life that you are absolutely passionate about. Connect with Summer and Jen and find out more at thelifeloveandmoney.com.